What's happening guys and welcome back to Morecambe and we're now in April. We've uh, made it all the way through to April from January and a few things have happened. A few things have happened in the last month. Good things and bad things. Mostly bad things to be honest. But if we look at the table, we'll have a quick look at our, uh, our position in the championship and you can see in the championship we're not doing too badly. We're sitting second place. Uh, six points behind West Brom but we do have a game in hand so we could pull that down to three points if we win that and it has actually changed very very dramatically since we last looked at it because the last time we looked at the table it was the start of January so it's been three months since then and Brighton if you remember way back we're actually sitting about 10 points clear of everybody um, so they've managed to absolutely screw it up we've managed to pull it back and West Brom have gone on a mad run and have managed to make it all the way to the very top of the table I think they were sitting like fifth or sixth at one point so they've they've really turned it around um, but it's very tight if you look at like Markham Brighton and Aston Villa they're all just a point I mean Markham and Brighton Aston Brighton both sitting on 73 points so it's very very tight and in those championship places looking for that automatic position um, but we do have a, a game in hand, of, obviously, over, over Brighton. But Aston Villa still got the same number of games and are a point behind. So, yeah, very tight. Very, very tight up there. Leeds have managed to pull themselves out of the relegation zone. Just. Um, actually, they've got, they've got themselves a four-point gap. But, yeah, it's not Ipswich down there. Not doing too well. But, yeah, um, not doing too badly in the league. But, if we go to our calendar and have a look through. Go back, right. At this point, we were doing very, very well with our with our squad. When was this? This was February. Actually, we when I last left you, we were 31st of January, right? In 2nd of February, we lost Lewis Baker. Lewis Baker went out injured with not just a small injury. He fucking well went and tore his ACL and is out for seven months. So that's his season over. He won't be back until next season. We've just gone and lost him, and it's an absolute... He's, he, he was doing really well first half of the season, and now we've lost our playmaker. Um, it's a good thing we got Ndidi, um, but we lost Kevin Farrell in the process, which, I mean, looking back, probably not the best of ideas now, but how are we to know that our main, main midfielder was to go and absolutely destroy his kneecap? So, well, maybe not his cap, but more his insight. Anyway forget about that um yeah and then by the time we got to here we were doing we were still carrying on quite well but somewhere around this area we also lost ethan davis to injury um and he has only just returned from injury he was out for two months with something i don't know what he did but i can't remember exactly but he was out for two months um which left us with an absolute disaster of a team but we, we carried on for now and we managed to beat Besiktas 2-0 um, in Besiktas. Um, and that was that was a really good quality game for us. We then, three days later, had to play Liverpool in the FA Cup. Which we managed to draw, just. We could, we could have potentially won it. But we managed to draw it and take it to a replay. Which, probably not the best of outcomes. I would have rather have won it or lost it. A replay was not, really not a good idea. But then two days later, we had to play Nottingham Forest, which we drew 2-2. We then went to Besiktas, no, Besiktas came to us, and we managed to draw that game 1-1. So we went through 3-1 on aggregate against them, which was very nice. So we went through into the round of 16, where we drew Monaco, of all teams. Monaco, one of the, the harder teams in the Europa League, we managed to draw them, but um, we'll get to that in a second. Two days after we played Besiktas, we had to play Ipswich, and we won that 1-0 just. It was a very close game. And then we had a replay against Liverpool, which we lost 2-0. Now, that 2-0 does not really represent what happened in that game. Not even close. Their first goal was an own goal. And it wasn't even, like, a quality own goal. It wasn't even, like, you know, I, I come sliding in trying to, like, save a shot or something like that and it ricochets off me and ends up in my own net anyway. It was a pass back. A fucking pass back and I stuck it in my own net. To be honest, it was Bruno Fernandez's fault. He was running away in stupid positioning. And uh, I tried to pass it back to him. And for some reason, my defender decided rather than passing it with his head, which would have meant the goalkeeper could have just picked it up, I'll kick it back to him, and he kicked it in his own bloody net. So, uh, yeah, that was 1-0. And then pushing on, trying to get ourselves a goal, we managed to 
get they got a counter attack and I managed to take one down in the box trying to uh, block a shot and uh, yeah that was that was well actually it wasn't really blocking a shot I was more just trying to slide and tackle I don't, I don't even know what I was doing but anyway I managed to uh, bring them down give them penalty away and they managed to win 2-0 but we could have easily easily got something from that game but nevertheless we got knocked out of the EFL uh, the uh, FA Cup we then had to play Cardiff, and then we had Monaco, which we managed. Well, I completely threw this game, absolutely threw it. I was two nil up, two nil up at half time, and I managed to throw throw it away in the second half and concede two goals, which wasn't the worst thing in the world, given that we then had two away goals. But it was it was not good. We could have easily just kept that two nil clean sheet, and that would have been golden. But no, we managed to throw it away. We then play Wigan, which we won 2 1 with a reduced team again. All this is absolutely annihilating our energy, by the way. We had some of the worst looking, I think, Ipswich. If I can find it, I'll find like a, a video or a screenshot or whatever of um, what I was having to work with energy wise. My team at this point was absolutely dead. We'd played, well, that was our fifth game in a week, pretty much. A week and a couple of days. We had to play five games. So our energy levels were absolutely nil. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll try and find a screenshot of that and show you what we were working with. But it never really recovered. And even coming into these games, I mean, play Wigan. Why? We played Wigan on a Tuesday when we just played on a Thursday. Put the Wigan game on a Monday and then we can play... We've got two days rest before Monaco. But FIFA's just fucking stupid when it comes to this sort of stuff. So we then had to play Monaco again, which we managed to lose 1-0 at home. Could have, could have, probably should have managed to get something out of that. I think Moreno Barroso managed to hit the woodwork three times in that game, and we managed to end up with nothing from it. So it was, it was really frustrating. Could have easily walked through that, but nevertheless, we did, we did mark them well. We got them to the round of 16 in the Europa League, which is something <laughs> they've probably never even dreamed of for the last few years. But we managed to get them that far. So yeah, could have been, could have been better, but it's, it's not a bad result. Uh, drew to Wolves and then we're into this month and I think this game against Blackburn will be the first game where we've actually had a full team with full energy since probably Bristol maybe the basic task game maybe but it's been a month and a half pretty much of having absolutely zero energy and now we're eventually getting ourselves back to a position where we actually have one game a week pretty much, or one or two games a week, given that we're now out of both the uh, domestic cups and the, and Europe as well. We only have the league to focus on. We should hopefully manage to get ourselves out of this and into the Premier League next season. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's probably a blessing in disguise not having so many games because we just don't have the squad for it, frankly. We just Our squad is just nowhere near deep enough. Um, if I go and look at the squad, I actually signed a couple of players um, from the youth team just to try and make up numbers, but they all signed too late. I signed like, you can see these guys, Ribeiro, Lopez, Gomez, um, yeah, I've signed all three of those. I think I signed somebody else as well, maybe. Um, I thought I signed somebody else from my youth team, but um, I signed all these three guys from my youth team, uh, but they all signed like a game too late for us, really. It was, it was, we'd just been knocked out of Europe and we didn't really have the games, but it was, uh, yeah, it was it was trying in vain to try and get some sort of uh, some sort of squad together that we could potentially do some sort of rotation. But um, this guy as well, this Ducksworth, I signed him um, when uh, Davis got injured because we needed another centre back, um, and I actually got him on a free. He was a free agent. Uh, came up on my, my scouting as a free agent, so he's six grand a week. Managed to sign him in February, which was nice, and uh, yeah, got ourselves a nice little centre back. He's 72 rated, so he fits into our back line very nicely with that rating. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know why Ethan Davis was suspended, but when he got injured, I, I was down to playing uh, Komar Romero and Sandoval or Winard, but I had so many games that they all had like half energy at best so I needed somebody else just to supplement that and really sort of uh, add somebody else that could rotate through the squads given that we're playing three centre backs and we only had one backup at any time because uh, 
Davis was injured. So, yeah, we needed another centre back. A um, few players have gone up ratings. Baker's gone up a point despite being injured, which is very impressive. Um, Barroso's up a point or two. Kawomia's up a couple of points. Ndidi's up to, to 80 rated. Davis has gone up a point again whilst injured somehow. Fernandez 72 now. Um, Sars up to 74, which is not bad. Um, Ducksworth, he was 71 when I signed him. He's up to 72. So, yeah, Silvi Sil Silviera, he's gone up a few points since we uh, signed him as well. And yeah, it's, it's, it's looking not too bad squad wise. Now that we don't have to focus on anything other than the league, we should be able to get through with this squad very nicely. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That pretty much sums up. Actually, no, that doesn't sum it up. Kwomia is refusing to sign a new contract extension. So he wants to leave at the end of the season, despite us potentially getting promoted. Because if he leaves, I don't think a Premier League team will come in for him. I reckon he'll be playing in the Championship. So I think if his best chance of playing in the Premier League would be to stay with us. But he uh, apparently doesn't want to uh, agree to any offers, doesn't want any offers put his way at all. And I think he's pretty much dead set on leaving the club. So that is what it is. And we'll probably have to see what we have to do with that at the end of the season. Uh, Sar will probably fit in there quite nicely. But going into the Premier League, I'll probably want somebody a bit more experienced. I'm thinking buying another centre-back. Proper centre-back. Decent rating. Um, uh, potentially another midfielder just to kind of... I think I'll get rid of Wildig and Murphy potentially um, and bring in another center mid just to kind of fill the gap um, not really sure what else we need another goalkeeper as well but that'll all be a story for potentially next week next week we will get to the end of the season um, potentially start next season don't really know yet see how it works out um, we will definitely be at the end of the season though, so we'll find out if we've been promoted or not, which I'm really hoping we will. Actually, there's one more thing I want to show you, which is a bit weird. Um, if we go into my youth team, right, if we look at my youth squad, Francisco Traveres. Now, I already have a Francisco Traveres, or Tavares, is uh, my midfielder that I've got in uh, in my first team. I have another one in my youth team. I also have a second, um, who else is it? Oh no, I've, I've, I've got rid of him actually. I also had a second uh, Dennis Moraes as well. I uh, I also have two Edson Riezes in my youth team for some reason. Um, and I also, I also had, um, yeah, I've got rid of him as well. I also had a, um, Fernandez as well. Um, my goalkeeper is like exactly the same name. It was a striker, an 18 year old striker with the exact same name as my goalkeeper. So why that's a thing seems like if you keep it, it happened to me on my Chelsea career as well that I started like way back at the start of uh, when this game first came out. And uh, I had a load of players all with the same name. So if you keep like scouting players from the same places, if you, if you do it long enough, you'll keep finding players with the same names. It's I don't know why FIFA thinks like does this, but it's uh, yeah, it's a very very odd one. You'd think they would manage to come up with enough unique names that you don't have repeats, um, or very rarely have a repeat of the same name. So it's it's yeah, I don't really know, but it's a it's a weird one. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I was going to show you. I've got scouts out looking for a new centre back, uh, a new goalkeeper, and a midfielder as well. Um, potentially uh, Michael Keane. Potentially Michael Keane. He is in the championship. Burnley got relegated, so they're in the championship. So we might be able to get him quite easily. I'm not sure what his potential is. I've got the scout out looking at him, so we'll find out shortly what his actual ability is. But um Florentin Pogba might be <laughs> could be a a potential as well. But I'm probably wanting somebody with uh, Premier League experience. Um and everybody knows that English players on FIFA are way overrated, so uh yeah, he's probably an absolute boss. So we'll uh potentially look at signing him next season um, but yeah that'll pretty much sum it up so uh, if you've enjoyed this video if you enjoy the uh, the Markham march towards the Premier League then be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe as well if you're new and you want to watch more of this stuff and yeah I'll catch you guys next week so until then cheerio Ciao.